Soon after I became a dean of the River Campus Libraries at the University of Rochester, uh, Don Waters of the Mellon Foundation asked a question which he asked the most uh, new library deans, which is, what keeps you up at night? And so at the top of my list were questions about copyright and fair use. Because really, in the library community, with a lot of questions that we have, we could always, for example, put out on a listserv considering something in digital humanities, uh, does anyone have a job description to share, or something like that. But when it came to copyright and fair use, you put a question like that on the, on the listserv, what are you doing, what are your best practices around e-reserves, for example, you would get deafening silence, because we just knew we could not put that in writing, we couldn't have conversations. And it was very frustrating, because it was such a core piece of what we're doing, and yet we aren't able to share ideas and have conversations. So when I brought that to Don's attention, he thought that perhaps the Mellon Foundation could help because it could serve as a convening body and it could really bring together individuals to work on this problem without causing attention on any one particular institution, um, which is really you know, part of the concern. every other month the library meets with the University Council and we bring to them the real questions that we're having and we're looking around fair use and copyright we look at the law we look at the code of best practices we look at past practice at Yale and we think about on a case-by-case -case basis which we would be doing and we use that discussion to be an opportunity to document our decisions to um, go through the exercise of thinking about fair use um, and hopefully creating what we, we hope will be um, a set of decisions that we can look back on and say, why did we make the decision that we did? And we can document the fact that it was not just a random decision, but is a really thoughtful process. And hopefully build for us a set of decision-making processes, so future decisions, where we look at a particular collection and think about what we can or cannot do, we can look back at our own local sort of case law, let's say, uh, look at our own local case law and um, say, well, how is this related? How is it similar? And not have to sort of reinvent the wheel over and over again. So without the code um, and that as a catalyst, I really don't think we would have made as much progress as we are now. So we have a, this process in place and we're meeting every other month and we're really starting to pick up some momentum about, about having these uh, conversations and it's giving us a vehicle for making decisions around copyright and, best and uh, fair use at Yale in the libraries in a way that we just couldn't do before. We're working with a lot of special collections, for example, and we're looking at deeds of gifts, and we're looking at um, international law. So we received a collection from overseas. What did the deed of gift look like? What does international copyright law, copyright law look like? And how might we make a decision about what we can and can't do with that collection? So that's causing us to say, well, we have a lot of ambiguity um, in the past. But going forward, can we establish a new deed of gift that we're comfortable with and we won't have this ambiguity going forward? Um, so those are sort of two examples. Another one um, would be um, materials, again, within special collections that have um, cultural um, sensitivity. Um, so thinking about uh, audio recordings from 40 years ago in the field, um, an anthropologist in Africa. Mm -hmm. um, should we digitize this? Should we make this available to the world? Certainly those individuals never thought that their voice would ever be heard by the world. Um, and so there wasn't that human subject review piece. How do we think about that problem and who should have access and privacy? So um, it's a lot of really thorny issues, but at least we feel like now we have a forum to, to be discussing them in. So we're going far beyond, I think, what the code was focused on, but it, it became that vehicle. It got us started. Um, and once we, we got going, it feels like, well, why should we stop here? Why should we stop with copyright and fair use in, the, in a more defined sense? Let's think about other intellectual property issues that are, that are really um, complicated issues, and let's get started. <laughs>